Three teams stand undefeated in the Classic 8 Conference. Tonight, two of them are squaring off here. Hensler Field in McWanago. It's the McWanago Indians taking on the Muskego Warriors. Good evening, everyone, along with Hall of Fame coach Terry Kelly, John Weiser with you. It's the game across the state of Wisconsin tonight in high school football. A lot of folks are going to be watching this game. They're going to be trying to predict which team emerges as the top D1 team. Should be a great matchup, great crowd here tonight, and uh, for the third time inside a calendar year, these two teams squaring off. And there's a good chance they could square off four times within a calendar year because once playoffs come, that's been the tradition. These two keep running into each other. Muskego's been the top dog in the Classic 8 for several years now, but it was McGuanago that ended their consecutive win streak last season. McGuanago may be the up-and-comer of this Classic 8 conference. Well, Coach Mike Ganevok has done an excellent job with the program here, and Coach Ken Krause in Muskego, they look at last year 10-2 and two, as not a successful season. Their standards are so high. As we take a look at our matchups here tonight, we start first with the Muskego. Who are we looking at offensively? Well, Coach Ken Krause thinks that Sam Stoiber might be the best fullback Muskego has ever had. And you got to have something of a quarterback back there to run that offense. Braden Horn is extremely efficient. He's only throwing 24 passes this year, six of them for touchdowns. A pair of seniors on defense for Muskego tonight. Yeah, Logan Lawan is a three-sport athlete. He's a defensive back, patrols that whole area really well. And Tristan Mick, a defensive end, is a house wrecker. He just makes things fall apart on the line of scrimmage. For the McGuanago Indians, offensively, I don't know if there's a better quarterback running back combo in the state of Wisconsin. Well, Evan Herbig stepped in last year, replaced an injured quarterback, had a fantastic year, has continued this year, and then Win Stang, the leading rusher in the state. Over 1,200 yards rushing so far this season. Defensively, a uh, pair of linebackers, a pair of senior linebackers. Well, Gavin Adams calls the defense, works out well. His dad is the defensive coordinator. And Riley Fisher, first team All-State last year at linebacker, 164 tackles. We're going to step aside. Mike McGivern will talk with the coaches, Ken Krause for Muskego, and Mike Ganevic for the Mus uh, McWanago Indians. We've got McWanago and Muskego tonight live from McWanago. Our Friday Night Rivals continues on My24. Welcome to the Heiser Automotive Friday night. Welcome to the Heiser Automotive Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week presented by Landmark Credit Union. We got a good one tonight. A couple of undefeated teams, some of the best teams in the state of Wisconsin and what I think is the best conference in the state. We're live at McGuanago as McGuanago takes on Muskego. I'm Mike McGiver alongside the two coaches for tonight's game. Ken Krause from Muskego, Mike, Mike Nabak. From McGuanago, Mike, I'm going to start with you. 
4-0, undefeated, feeling pretty good about this team. You know, we, we learn a lot about our teams early in the season, and then I think about this time of the year, we start learning even more. Coach, how are you feeling about this group? They, they come to work every day with, with a willingness to get better. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of their efforts so far. But, you know, now we're really getting into the, the heart of our Class Gate schedule. And, and as Coach and I would both agree, it's the, the best conference in the state. So, yeah, you know, this, this is a huge test for us tonight. We'll see where we're at. Hey, Coach, Coach Krause, first and foremost, congratulations. You're going to be inducted into the Wisconsin Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame, and I say congratulations from a lot of people. Um, same question for you. We start learning things about our team, I think, early on and then about midseason. Feeling pretty good about this group? I love this group. This group uh, 100% buys into our program. They've lifted weights year-round for four years. They're relentless at practice. I don't think I've had to raise my voice one time to any of our varsity uh, football players. They police themselves. They lead themselves. Uh, a lot of new names this year, and, and new guys are emerging for us. So it's, it's exciting. It's fun. We're very fortunate to uh, be in this situation. Coach Kanevak, when, when we watch your team tonight, um, are we looking at a, a younger team, a senior-laden team? Let's talk a little bit about this team. Well, I th I, there's a lot of seniors uh, on the team. Um, we got a, we got a bunch of juniors as well that play, but uh, a lot of these guys got, saw significant snaps last year. Uh, so the, we we do have ex experience on both sides of the ball. Coach uh, McGuanago is a football community. I believe that, and so is Muskego. And and when you guys play against each other, there's something different that week. Did did the players feel that as well? Yeah, you don't have to tell any kid who was on the schedule this week uh they know everyone knows uh, and I, I i'm probably speaking for both schools here but yeah it's we're, we're neighboring communities and it's a great rivalry and we both love football hey same question coach as far as your team senior laden team younger team a mixture a little bit of mixture defensively we're pretty senior heavy offensively we start six juniors um so it's a good group of kids we've got 76 juniors and seniors on our team so it's a really special to have that many kids want to play football in our program Hey, I'm glad, uh, Coach, that you said that you agree with me as far as this being the best football conference. You would know, and we had this when I had my radio show, we talked about it because you, you've also coached in what some people think is the best football conference, but I think this one is. Excited about tonight's matchup. Thanks for having us out here tonight. Thank you very much, Mike. Appreciate all you do. You bet. Hey, we're going to get to a break. Other side of the break, Terry Kelly, John, Terry Kelly and John Weiser will get the call of the game. This is the Heiser Automotive Friday Night Rivals brought to you by Landmark Credit Union. We are ready to go here tonight in Mukwanago. A sellout crowd, standing room only, rimming the outer portion of the field here tonight. Student sections well repped tonight by both schools. Might be the largest student sections we've seen in a while. Here are our keys to the game tonight. Coach, how do you have it drawn up? Well, Muskego needs to defeat the blocking schemes of Mukwanago. Outstanding offensive line. 
They've got to hold their fakes all the way to the whistle to confuse the McQuanico defense. And they, Coach Krause says he's got a three-headed monster in the backfield, three backs who he sees as being equal. And for McQuanico tonight. Now their offensive blocking's got to be outstanding. They like to run the ball just like Muskego. Their line's got to be dominant. They've got to be disciplined on deed and not get fooled by that wing T offense of Muskego. And they need to avoid turnovers. Warriors in white won the coin toss, deferred to the second half. There's Coach Mike Ganavik. Oh, the kids just love him and what he has done. Transformed this program once again into a power. Owen Kilton and Wynn Stang. That's Kilton in your picture there. There's Ken Krause. Newly elected into the Wisconsin Football Coaches Association Hall of Fame. He'll go in this spring. And we are set. Our kickoffs tonight brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Nolan Tomzik gets us underway. And we'll drive this one into the end zone for the touchback. We will get the McGuanago offense at the 20-yard line. We know all about Wynn Stang. He is the leading runner in the state of Wisconsin, over 1,200 yards rushing, 16 touchdowns already this year. Surpassing last year's mark, he ran for over 1,000 yards and 19 touchdowns. And there you look at their offense, Herbig at quarterback. One name you will not see out there is Trevor Boucher. He is not going to play tonight. Injured and not in the lineup. He is in street clothes on the sideline. First and 10 from the far hash at the 20 yard line. And this is Stang. Bangs his way up the middle. He'll get to the 26 for a gain of six before he is stacked up there. Leading the charge, Mitchell Selhausen, the outside linebacker for the Warriors. Here's the Warrior defense. Outstanding defense. We talked about Tristan Mick at that defensive end. A very good secondary as well. Senior laden across the back line at the corners and safeties. Second and four. Staying again. Spinning. Fighting his way forward. Selhausen again was there along with Winteiser. Winteiser, I should say. Steve Winteiser. The inside linebacker and staying lost his helmet. He will have to come off for one play. So far in the season, only four games. Staying already has 95 carries. Ball just shy, and no, they will give him a first down. The nose of the football touching the 30 yard line. So, our first first down brought to you by Best Electric Service. Best Electric Service connect with the best. I'll try and run it near side. Not much there. Jackson Miller, the running back. Got a yard. That's about it. Jack Plockelman in there on the stop. Our game being streamed all season long at my24milwaukee.com. Well, defensive coordinator Ryan McKaysey feels that these four linebackers he's got are the real strength of that defense and uh, got three seniors and a junior in that group second and nine stack receivers to the left and they'll drag the receiver Rybolt in motion they'll go the other way on the counter big hole Herbig across midfield Herbig to the 35 Herbig out of bounds near the 30 yard line brought down by Wensick Chased them down the corner. And they had stacked the receivers to the left. And they cleared the safety and the corner. That allowed Herbig to get the edge. Plus, they did that fake to uh, Stang, which held the defense for a moment. Let Herbig work himself free. Yards. 38 yards on that run. Now Herbig wants to put it up. He's going to throw was thrown behind the receiver, makes the catch down at the five-yard line. Owen Kilton, the senior, pass was thrown a little bit behind, but he hung with it, made the catch. Yeah, Kilton is filling in for Trevor Boucher, who, as you mentioned, is out with an injury. Going to see a lot of waggle patterns, little bootlegs from the quarterback. Herbig was an honorable mention all-conference performer a year ago. 
First and goal from the five. Stang, left side, Stang, into the end zone. No. Stop shy of the goal line at the one. One more look. Well, the McGuanagall crowd wanted it to be a oh, touchdown. They certainly did. You can see he's just short. Oh, that shoulder hit just before the goal line. Second and goal inside the one. Stang going to be driven back and lose a couple. Back to the three-yard line. Matt Blair, inside linebacker, shot the gap, made the play. That's one of those linebackers that Coach Lucchese had so much confidence in. Shot right through the gap. Yep. Yes, he did. Ball placed at the two-yard line. Third and goal. We're inside the Salvation Army red zone. Every time an opponent gets inside the 20-yard line, they're inside the Salvation Army red zone. Third and goal from the two. Three receivers, a slot here to the near side. And Herring's going to be pulled down back at the four. The defense coming up big. Steve Wintheiser there to make the stop for the Warriors, bringing up fourth down. This group of linebackers, a little smaller than what we've seen from Muskego over the years, but they're extremely fast. Two of these guys are track athletes. Third one is a baseball player. Loss of two back to the four-yard line. This will be a 21-yard field goal attempt. Ryan McCormick, the junior. High snap, ball down, kick on the way, and it is good. So McWanigo comes away with points on their first drive. A big 38-yard run by Herbig setting this one up. And then the pass play inside the five, but the Muskego defense buckled down, kept him out of the end zone, perhaps a win for the Indian or for the Warrior defense. Yeah, you've got to tip your hat, right? You know, somebody could say, well, you allowed McWanigo to score, but McWanigo was set there to maybe get seven, held him to three. So now we'll get a look at the Muskego offense here tonight. Well, in our keys to the game, we referred to that uh, three-headed monster of backfield in terms of looking at, you know, not only do you have Sam Stoiber at your fullback, but Ashton Krause, one of the coach's sons, is at one running back, and Max Schneider, the other. McCormick tees it up at the 40. Stoiber and Lawan, the deep men for Muskego. McCormick kicks it away. Stoiber from the three. Up the fire hash to the 15. Cuts back up the middle across the 20, 25. And we'll drive it forward to about the 28-yard line. That's where Muskego will start. Riley Wernis there on the stop. Let's head to our landmark credit union moment of the game. Welcome to tonight's game. I'm Jennifer Jackson, branch manager with Landmark Credit Union. Once again, Landmark Credit Union is proud to be a sponsor of the Friday Night Rivals game of the week on My24. We're proud to show our support for local schools and to give back to the communities we serve. At Landmark Credit Union, our job is to be there for our members for every Landmark moment. If it has to do with your life and your money, we can help. Visit us online or at one of over 30 branches, including locations near the two schools playing tonight. You can learn more at LandmarkCU.com. Stoiber up the near sideline across midfield. Cuts it back inside the 25 and brought down near the 19-yard line. Little fullback trap. Stoiber took it all the way down inside the 20. 53 yard rumble for Stoiber. Sets up Muskego. Here it is again. You could just see the trap lock mm. coming. I know Coach Krause will say pound for pound, maybe the best running back between the tackles 
in the state of Wisconsin. First and 10 inside the 20. They're in the Salvation Army red zone. They're going to throw it out to flat incomplete. Intended for Ashton Krause as we head downstairs, our first visit with Mike McGivern. So, guys, uh, watching the defense here on Muskego sidelines, before the coaches got there, a team that gives up points the first drive normally got their head down a little bit, not these boys. Feel really good about that stop on the goal line, giving up three. And I'll tell you what, they're fired up. And that's before the coaches came and talked to them. Pretty excited to see them get back on the field. Now you heard Coach Krause mention that with you, Mike, talking about how this team pretty much has taken upon themselves. They don't need the coaches to fire up. They'll try the fullback up the middle, not much there. A couple, maybe. Stoiber on the carry, brought down on the play by Riley Fisher, the inside linebacker. Well, Sam was a first-team all-conference selection a year ago out of that fullback position, so that's kind of the center point of that wing T offense. Aiden Krause, the receiver split to the far side. Double wing, single back, Stoiber. Under center, Horn, the quarterback. Stoiber gets the call. Lowers his head inside the 15 down to about the 12-yard line. He's going to be short of the first down. Brings up a fourth down decision here for Coach Krause and Muskego. Brought down by Loomis and Jackson Link. Fourth and three for Muskego. And it looks like they will bring their field goal unit on. Nolan Tomsic. 29-yard field goal. Good snap. Ball down. And it is good. Each team with a field goal on their first possession tonight. We are knotted at three as we step aside. You're watching the Heiser Automotive Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. I can't see. I got to read. Weeknights, you can watch two of your favorite television families for some dinnertime delights. First, it's an hour of the Goldbergs at 5, then catch the Baxters on Last Man Standing at 6 here on My 24. 29 yard field goal ties the game at 3. Tomzik has it teed up. Each team scoring on their first possession tonight. Menards brings you our kickoffs each and every week. Save big money at Menards. Again, a strong leg by Tom Zek will drive this one through the end zone. Closed captioning tonight is brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock identity theft protection starts here. One of the things we'll comment on throughout the evening is the way these two teams practice. And one of the things you know when you go to a Muskego practice no wasted time. For example, when they're working on kicking extra points, they have three units at the same time, just on different parts of the field, all kicking through the same goalpost. Nobody's standing around. From the 20, first and 10. Staying 
working the left side. Gets it out to about the 25-yard line, maybe the 26 for a gain of six on the play. Tough guy to bring down, Winstang. 6'1", 195, second-team all-conference. He's also a lacrosse player, multi-sport athlete. you got to be tough running around and playing lacrosse. You can't be checked to the turf. People hitting you with sticks, yeah, all right? Well, look at how Rafi turned out, though. Once again, Stang going to be short of the first down. Out to about the 28-yard line, short by a couple, brought down by Jack Plockelman. You know, if you could get a, a close-up of how that Muskego defense is trying to offset what McGuanagall is doing. They're doing a little bit of stemming prior to the snap, trying to goof up the blocking calls. Third and two from their own 28. Two receivers to the near side, single back formation. Stang gets the call. Stang caught in the backfield. Going to be close. He might be short. And they will mark it short. Brought down by Evan Stokowiak, outside linebacker in there now. You saw Fourth number, inches. Saw number 77, Nathan Roy, their 6'6", 280-pound tackle. Herbig wasting no time on the quarterback keep off that tight split. Picks up the first down. Best electric service first down as we head downstairs to Mike McGivern. You know, guys, uh, watching uh, Ken Krause and his offensive coaching staff here at Muskego, I'm learning a whole lot, man. Yeah, there isn't much these guys haven't seen, and to have them break down a film in about 30 seconds and say, look, here's what we're missing. We need to make sure we do this. Very calmly talk to the offensive line. Man, I'm learning a ton here, boys. High snap. We'll lose yardage, messing up the timing there. Mick was in there first, and St McCullough and Stokowiak able to finish off Herbig for a loss. Yeah, no doubt, you know, once your timing gets disrupted, things start to break down. You can see Tristan Mick get in there, first team all-conference selection a year ago. Loss of two, second and 12. Staying, fake. Herbig throws it out near side. It'll be enough for a McGuanago first down out near the 42-yard line. Swing pass that time to Emmett Dobbs, the fullback. Mitchell Sellhausen on the tackle. When you're a fullback in this offense, you don't get to carry the ball very often. You're usually a blocker. That time they snuck him out into the flat, got the first down. Protects that football as he takes it out of bounds. You got to throw that fullback a bone every now and then, right? Keep him in the game. Three receivers, single back here late here in the first, tied at three. Herbeg around the left side on the keep. He'll read option and he'll get a couple, maybe two. Logan Lawan there to make the stop along with Mitchell Selhausen for Muskego. You can see Muskego is very, very much. Gap responsibility sound. They're, they're staying at home, watching their keys, not going to just chase all over the ballpark. Rybolt, the single receiver here to the near side. Second down, eight. Ball at the 44 yard line. Nice run up the middle. Staying with the carry. Makes it a third and manageable. Tristan Mick and Selhausen. Selhausen with four tackles here in the quarter already. Well, Mitchell's been very active this season. He's already got 36 tackles coming into this game. 6'1", 190-pound senior. He has been busy. A couple of interceptions to go with those tackles as well. Another key third down, third and four from their own 48. Dodds the fullback in a wing here to the near side. Stang the single back. Herbig from the pistol. On the run, breaks it down, and I think he's going to be short. Let's see. He'll 
spot it at the 49 of McWanago, a couple of yards shy. Selhausen again able to track him down. Well, you can see the speed of those linebackers, you know, coming through now in terms of how quickly they swarm to the ball. Mike Ganevic going to play a little field position here, electing to punt from midfield. Fourth and three. Ryan McCormick. Logan Lawan standing inside the 20, awaits the kick. Nice driving spiral, fair catch signaled for and made by Lawan at the 24-yard line. Minute 16 to go here in the first. 3-3 our score, and again this season we're going to highlight a hit of the game brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals. Admiral Hockey just around the corner. Flip the calendar, we're ready to play hockey. I'm ready. First and 10 from the 24. Graydon Horn in under center. Send the wing in motion. We'll give it to the fullback Stoiber across the 30, a big burst out to the 35 yard line. Pick up about 10, maybe 11. Cole Girard, honorable mention all conference at strong safety, able to make the stop. 10 yard pickup by Stoiber. See the quick trap yes. there as they get out in 56. Excellent job on that block on Connor Loomis. Another best electric service first down. Under a minute to go here in the first. To the wing back, Schneider. Cuts it back at the hash. He'll get a big gash up across the 40 yard line. Off the left wing that time, Max Schneider. 29 carries coming into the game here tonight. Brought down by Braden Pampu. Play was designed to go a lot wider, but Schneider just planted that foot, turned up field. You can see his little burst that he was able to put. Last play of the quarter. Horn in under center. Single receiver to the right, double wing. Wing in motion. He'll get the call. Not much there. Ashton Krause on the carry. And that will end our first quarter here at Hensler Field in McGuanago. Two of the powers of the Classic 8. Two of the three undefeated teams in the Classic 8. Squaring off tonight on our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals. Presented by Landmark Credit Union. Wanna go band 
performing between quarter break as we head into the second quarter with Mike McGivern and Terry Kelly. John Weiser with you and our My 24 Sports crew in McWanago tonight. Third and three for Muskego. Ball at the 41-yard line of the Warriors. Stoiber up the middle. They'll get the first down across midfield to the McGuanago 46-yard line. Gain of 16 and a first down by Stoiber. Gage Tower there finally got him down. Well, as you see, uh, if viewers watch carefully, how much time the guys not getting the ball fake pretending they have it. First and 10 at the 46 of McGuanago. And Stoiber again going over the left side inside the 45 to the 42 yard line. Walker powers the defensive end there to make the stop. Coach Ken Krause calls the offensive play and he says the three cornerstones of their offensive philosophy is communication. You're going to see these linemen talking to one another, talking to the backs what their blocking schemes are. They block to the whistle and they carry out their fakes. Gain of four, second down six from the 42. Krause, Ashton Krause breaking tackles inside the 30 yard line. Gain of 13 and a first down. Gage Tower again there to make the stop for McWanago. That's that old belly option. You fake it to that first back and then you get one and a half holes wider and give it to that second back. If the defensive collapses, there's a seam there you can run through. Best electric service first down at the 29 of McWanago. Horn wants to throw. The lefty puts it up. Player falls down. Penalty marker on the play. Intended for Aiden Krause. Incidental contact, but enough to draw our first flag of the game. Obviously, Aiden's the son of Coach Ken Krause. He's only a junior, 6'4", 198 pounds. Ten catches on the year. He missed an early game with a wrist injury. Uh, people kiddingly talk about Eric Krause that sometimes he'll throw as many as 10 times in a game. They'll spot the football at the 22-yard line. We'll take another look here. He was going down, and he took the defender with him. Officials are huddling up here. I believe this is a half the distance penalty. We shall see. Should be at the 14-yard line. If my memory serves me correct. I would never doubt your memory. That's exactly what they will do. One of the toughest things to do is when you've got a team that runs the wing T as well as Mosquito does to not be susceptible to play action passing. Moves the football inside the Salvation Army red zone. Again, this season when a team gets inside their opponent's 20, they enter the Salvation Army red zone. Salvation Army doing the most good. To volunteer or donate, please visit samilwaukee.org. From the 14-yard line, first and 10. Pass interference call setting them up. Stoiber. Around the outside, it gets to about the 15-yard line, and that's it. That was not Stoiber. That was Krause, Ashton Krause. Gavin Adams, the outside linebacker, right there, stayed home, made the play. As we mentioned earlier, Gavin calls all the defenses. He's getting those uh, signals from his father, Dave, the defensive coordinator from McGuanago. 77 tackles a year ago for Adams. Loss of one, second and 11.
Horn wants to throw. Pump fakes. Back of the end zone, and it leads his receiver. Incomplete. Max Schneider, the intended target back there, but just simply ran out of real estate and almost ran into the goalpost. We kid about Eric Krause, but how many times in the past four years have we seen out of four plays, two of them be passes? Not very often. Count on one hand. Sets up third and 11 now with the incompletion. Clock stopped, just under nine and a half to go. First half tied at three. Krause tripped up inside the 15 down to about the 11 yard line. Brought down on the play by Gerard. Cole Gerard. Honorable mention all conference and once again field goal unit on for the Warriors. Now he just got a hand on him, trip him up, otherwise he might have scored on that. They'll spot it at the 19. This will be a 29 yard attempt. Jack Olson is the long snapper. Jack LaRose is the holder for Nolan Tomzik. Gets it away and it is good. Two for two tonight is Tomzik gives his team the first lead of the evening. 6-3 on a 29-yard field goal by Nolan Tomzik. So could not take advantage of the interference penalty that set them up inside the 15-yard line. Tomchick with a couple of field goals tonight. Coach Domo on special teams. He's been around for a while, hasn't he? 42 years he's been coaching at Muskego. <laughs> All this season, touchdowns are being brought to you by Planet Fitness, the judge-free zone. We have yet to see a touchdown here tonight. Nonetheless, an exciting game. As expected, kind of a defensive chess match between these two schools. Now well, both teams have shown they can move the ball. Once again, th these two teams are very mm. similar, even though their, you know, their system is different. But they still have that same concept. They want to run the ball, want to use the pass to, you know, take advantage of weaknesses they're seeing as people try to defend the rush. That will go in for the touchback. Right. Well, the Salvation Army of Milwaukee County needs volunteers this holiday season. They're looking for bell ringers as well as volunteers for the toy shop program, coats for kids program, and Christmas family feast. Look for those opportunities over the next few weeks at samilwaukee.org. You can ring bells with your family and friends, with coworkers, or with your student group or sports team to get involved. Just two hours at a red kettle can make a difference. 87 cents of every dollar received at the kettle goes to helping those in need in Milwaukee County. Your donations help fund dozens of programs and services, including the Feed the Kids Summer Lunch Program, Back to School Backpacks and School Supplies, Coats for Kids, Toys for Christmas, and Christmas Family Feast. For more information, check out everything at the Salvation Army has to offer, samilwaukee.org. Staying brought down by Xavier Gutierrez, the nose guard. Gain of six, second down and four at the 26-yard line. Yeah, Gutierrez is a returning starter, and he's on that defensive line along with Tristan Mick and a sophomore, Nick McCullough. Mm -hmm. First sophomore mm -hmm. to start on defense for Muskego since Hunter Waller. Staying, trying to go left side. Fights his way to the 29, gain of three. Mitchell Salhausen with his sixth tackle in the half as once again we check in with Mike McGivern. So, guys, you talked about the chess match. Man, it's fun watching, the, again, this offensive staff here at Muskego trying to figure out the chess match. They've, a couple of changes made on the McGuanago defense when they were getting down close to the goal line. 
Muskego guys go, okay, if they're going to do this, we need to do this. We're going to try it this way. It's fun for me watching that little chess match here on the field. I know as a coach, Mike, you're loving this. I, I know that. I, I, like a kid in a candy store for Mike McGivern down there following this coaching staff. Looks like they marked him short here on the first down. I don't know if they're going to bring the sticks in or not. Well, they went for it earlier. They'll go for it again, and forward progress will get the first down. Evan Herbig, the quarterback, will sneak it for the first down. Two for two now on fourth down conversions. Getting us to a best electric service first down. Owen Kilton will split out here the near side for McGuanago. Mason Reibolt the split end to the right side, the far side on your screen. Single back is staying with a wing to the right. That's the fullback Emmett Dodds. Play fake. Herbig wants to air it out. Looking for the near side, and it's incomplete. A pickable ball that time. If the defensive back turned around, Will Wensick. He was right there, actually read the pattern well, intended for Kilton. Herbig just a lot of air under that football. It's one of those patterns that they are looking for Trevor Boucher, who's missing tonight. Uh, that ball, however, was well out of uh, Owen Kilton's reach. Second and 10 from the 31. Little adjustment here by Muskego on defense. Toss to Stang, right side, has to cut it back inside, will get yardage there. Out to about the 34-yard line, Nick McCullough able to get him down, but uh, good job by Stang to get positive yardage there as the Muskego defense got into the backfield. Yeah, it's about the third time Muskego has gone into a forefront rather than their 3-3 stack, trying to cover up some of those offensive linemen and let the linebackers roam more freely. Third and seven from their own 34. Play fake. Herbig over the middle. Has his man. Making a catch. Kilton inside the 30-yard line. First and 10. McWanago Jack LaRose able to bring Owen Kilton down. First reception of the night for Kilton. Now before the game, we talked about two running teams Maybe going to employ the pass a little more than folks might expect tonight. Thirty-four yard pickup. First and ten at the Muskego thirty. Staying up the middle. Staying breaking a tackle inside the twenty-five yard line. Gain of about six on the play. Logan Lawan. Finally got the spinning Stang to the turf. That offensive line for McQuanago, Nathan Roy at the left tackle, Ryan Mazur at guard, Grant Stromberg at center, Will Schnabel at the right guard, a three-year starter, and Armando Brazzani. And they try to get hip to hip. They're going to get an initial double team, and then one guy is going to advance to that second level to get to that linebacker. Second and four. Stang breaking a tackle inside the 20 yard line. Tristan Mick there to make the stop. He is a Crumry Award finalist for this season once again. Yeah, made it to state last year in the shot put for the Muskego track team. Coaches say he did a great job becoming, kind of redoing his body, becoming even more powerful and quicker working in the weight room and doing speed and agility. Ball at the 20, third and one. Reibolt split here to the near side. Kilton to the far side. Stang will get the first down to the 18 yard line. Matt Blair with the tackle, but enough for an Indian first down. Now, Coach Lucchese has been very excited about the job Matt Blair has been doing so far this season. You know, he looks at him along with Jack Plockelman, Mitchell Sellhausen, and Steve Weintheiser 
is really, really hip performing. First and 10 inside the 19. Herbig rolling. Now fires, diving grab at the sideline. Catch made near the seven. Should be enough for a first down, a gain of 12 on the play. Mason Reibolt with his first reception of the game. Yeah, on the season, uh, Mason's got 11 catches and three touchdowns. Led nicely to the boundary, made a nice grab, hung on to it. First and goal from the seventh. And we got a timeout taken here. Muskego will take the timeout. We'll take our quarter break as well. 4.03 to go here in this first half. 6 3, Muskego. Our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. First time out. Courtney and the Justice Society are keeping their friends close and their frenemies closer. Who can be trusted? We'll find out in an all-new season of DC's Stargirl. Suit up for an all-new episode this Wednesday at 7 on CW18. Muskego taking the timeout on defense. First and goal from the 7 for McWanago. Stang to the 5 and driven back there. Looked like it was Lawan leading the charge there defensively for Muskego. Coach, you were talking about it. See what Coach Lucchese had drawn up here defensively to try and counter the run here. Right. He's going to do a little bit of slanting to kind of, mm. you know, close off those seams that their Aquanico offensive line's trying to create. And take Count up the number of Muskego defenders around the ball carrier when a tackle is made. They swarm to the ball. Second and goal just inside the five. Herbig hit as he's thrown and gets it away incomplete. Looking for the fullback again, trying to drag him across. That was Emma Dobbs. Tristan Mick got in there on the pressure. Was draped all over Herbig as he got that one away. And again, no grounding he was outside the tackle box. Outside the tackle box. Although that, I think, wasn't so much he was trying to ground it. Mick just threw right. off his delivery that time. Herbig couldn't get that ball out there. And Coach Gnebic is going to take his time out here. Right now, 6-3 ball game. Let's head downstairs. Mike McGivern, our community advocate interview. Guys, we're here with Kerry Southern. And she uh, graduated from Muskego, by the way, so volunteered to be here. Thank you. Hey, you know, a lot of times when we talk to community advocates, we talk about uh, being being clean and drug-free. But we, you and I talked a lot about mental health and the importance of that when we talk to families and kids. Yeah, mental health is just as important as our physical health. And September is critical because it's Suicide Prevention Month across the country. Tough start, times are tough, and we want to make sure everyone's doing as well as they can, reaching out for help when they need it. Hey, your parents must be so proud. Thank you so much for, uh, for what you do. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you bet, boys. Back to you. Mike, thank you. Critical third down here. 
for McGuanagall. They've driven it down inside the four-yard line, trailing 6-3. Yeah, earlier in the game, you know, Muskego tightened up and stopped him at the goal line and forced the field goal kick. Coach Ryan Lucchese is one of, regarded as one of the best defensive coordinators in the state. Rybolt and Dobbs split to the near side with Dobbs in the slot. Stang the single back. Herbig from the pistol. Stang, touchdown, McGuanagall. Planet Fitness touchdown of the ball game tonight, and it goes to Win Stang on a four yard run. You can see 77, Nathan Roy pull around and lead through the hole. And when you've got a 6'6", 280 pounder pulling around, lead through the hole, you're gonna create a seam. Ryan McCormick for the extra point. Drills it through. 80 yard drive. Capped off on the four yard touchdown run by Wynn Stang. That is his 17th touchdown of the season. Yeah, Stang has had a, a season already <laughs> through four and a half games, you know. You know, last year he had 150 attempts, and you mentioned he went for over 1,000 yards, but 19 touchdowns. But he'd be the first one to tell you, where do those touchdowns come from? That offensive line. Well, I'm impressed with Nathan Roy. Honorable mention, all-conference, 6'6", 280, a junior. And, uh, again, champion in shot put as well. Yeah, and they'll do some games a little later on, I think, of the game. You might see Nathan Roy move from the left side and get next to Wolf Schnabel, three-year starter at guard. Creates a real strength. They get actually an unbalanced look. They'll have three linemen to the right of the center. Ryan McCormick set for our Menards kickoff. Save big money at Menards. Stoiber and Lawan, the deep men here for Muskego. This will be returnable. Lawan to the 20, breaks it outside to the 30, cut back to the middle, flag down. Flag on the play. Aaron Kochik able to make the tackle, but walk this one back against Muskego. During the return, holding, receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. They'll move the football to the 25-yard line for Muskego. They'll have just over three minutes and two timeouts remaining here in the half. Well, Coach Damo, the special teams uh, coordinator, is not going to be happy mm. with that. They take pride in executing their special teams. Braden Horn in under center. Give it to the wing, coming around the near side. Big hole across the 35, stumbles to the 40. Max Schneider, the junior on the carry, coming around the right side, Braden Pampu. His second tackle tonight makes the stop. Move it out to the 38, gain of 13, and a best electric service first down. Stoiber, left side with some room to midfield. Gain of 14, Gage Tower making the stop. Saw that tackle, number 66, Dom Steer. Dom got a nice block. Right there, you got it. Good call, coach. 
You haven't lost your edge. Didn't know I had one. <laughs> From the McQuanago 49. Horn. Under pressure. Throws it away. Outside the tackle box. Again, the new rule this year in high school football, the quarterback can throw it away to avoid the sack. And that's exactly what Horn did there. Well, Coach Krause just had a tremendous amount of praise for Braden Horn. Just what an intelligent player he is, how he manages things. Team has confidence in what he's doing at all times. Colin Viola in on that pressure that time, the senior outside linebacker. Second and 10 from the 49. Stoiber fights his way down to the 45 for a gain of four. Jackson Link, the nose guard, there on the stop. Skigo getting a little bit of rhythm here late in this first half. See if they try that second back through on this play. Third down and six. We called it. Krause going to be stopped short of the first down, trying to get the edge left side. Shut down on the play. Walker Powers able to string that out and make the stop from his defensive end position. You know, the backfield action on so many of these plays is similar, but what gets changed all the time are the blocking schemes Muskego's employing. Guys will turn to each other. Hey, I'm going to come down. You're going to go behind. We're going to do a little full block. Coming up in the National Guard Halftime Report, we will highlight this week's Scholar Athlete nominees, and we'll meet our Landmark Booster of the Game Award recipient. That's all coming up at the half, brought to you by the Wisconsin Army National Guard. 109 to go, first half, 10-6, McWanago on top of Muskego. Interesting to see if they'd be willing to chance fake punt on this one. You know, you've got them on, you're on their 45. You've got a lot of confidence in your defense most of the time. Do you take it and try to turn the game around, or do you say, okay, let's let's play conservatively. So the first half, we'll see where we are later. Fourth down and six. Nolan Tomchek is in there. The punter. And he will punt it away. This will be Kilton returning at the 11. Trying to get the corner flag down. Kilton will get it up the near sideline to about the 35-yard line, but a penalty flag on the play. This one will be coming back. A nice return by Owen Kilton. You saw some of his speed. Probably be half the distance penalty here from the 11-yard line. Mosquito's got two timeouts left. See if they'll use one of those and see if they can. Legal block in the back. Receiving team. Half the distance to the goal, first down. We'll spot the football at the six yard line for McWanago. Mason Reibold split to the near side. Kilton split to the far side. Stang works his way up the middle. Across the five, stood up near the seven-yard line. Gain of about one, maybe two on the play. Selhausen has quite the half. Mitchell Selhausen now with seven tackles tonight. Help. Quick linebackers. 
playing within a scheme that the whole idea of a 3-3 stack, a 3-3-5, it's called a lot of times, is to have those linebackers scraping and getting to those holes, making those tackles. Staying the single back, Kelton to the far side. Rybolt near side. Herbig working from the pistol, second and nine from the seven. Staying, met up the middle, tried to bounce it to the left, got out to the 10 yard line. Gain of about three on the play, and that will run out our clock. Selhausen and Plockelman make the tackle, and our first half comes to an end. Well, it's everything we advertised and then some here tonight. A close fought first half. McWanago taking the early 3 0 lead. Muskego takes a 6 3 lead. McWanago coming back on a four yard touchdown run by Stang to lead it here at the half 10 to 6. Muskego will get the second half kickoff in the third quarter. This is our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union, Hensler Field, McGuanago. 10-6 Indians on top. Stay tuned, our National Guard halftime report just around the corner on my 24. It's just such a great, great experience. Freaking really good. And welcome to our Wisconsin Army National Guard halftime report from Hensler Field in McWanago. The Indians on top by a score of 10-6. to 6. Tonight we'd like to highlight our Schuyler Athlete nominees brought to you by the great folks at GlaxoSmithKline. From Muskego High School, Derek Honaki. Derek participates in football, swim and dive, and track and field. He carries a 3.877 GPA and is an AP student. Derek is one of only two students in the school who has participated in three sports each year for his entire high school career. He is a three-time letter winner in both football and track, along with being selected all-conference as a swimmer. Derek gives back to his community through volunteering, including at the middle school track meet, Special Olympics track meet, the Feed My Starving Children program, along with coaching youth football. And according to AD Ryan McMillan, Derek is someone who models the Warriors' way and represents Muskego with pride and honor. And from McWanago High School tonight, Katie McLaughlin. Katie participates in track and field and soccer and carries a 3.786 GPA. She is a McWanago High School scholar, athlete, and honor roll student. Katie was state champ in the 4x200 relay, along with being state runner-up in the 4x100 relay. She was an honorable mention all-conference selection in soccer. Katie volunteers her time with youth soccer and with Christmas basket program and gifts for the needy through her church. A.D. Andy Trudell says Katie is a great athlete and even a better person. Once again, congratulations to this week's Scholar Athlete nominees. Our weekly nominees will be in the running to receive a part of $5,000 in scholarship funds provided by the folks at GlaxoSmithKline. Klein. 
Time now for our landmark go, credit union booster of the game. Here's Mike. Hey, guys, normally when I'm with these people, everybody's real quiet. No, no, these guys are having fun down here, and I love that. Hey, our partners at Landmark Credit Union are so proud to serve and support our local communities. And tonight, we are honored. Our partners at our partners at Landmark Credit Union proud to serve and support our local communities, and tonight they are honored to recognize a local business who has consistently shown incredible support of high school athlete, athletics at McGuanago. We're proud to introduce the Landmark Credit Union booster of the game, Lynch of McGuanago, and accepting the award on behalf of the dealership is owner Mr. Patrick Lynch. Patrick, as a token of Landmark's appreciation for your hard work and the dealership's dedication to McGuanago High School Athletics, they would like to present you with a gift along with a $500 donation to the Booster Club so that you and the team at Lynch McWanago can continue to support the great things the Booster Club does for student athletes. On behalf of everyone at Landmark Credit Union, we thank you for your support. We'll toss it back to Mike. Mike. Man, I, I really thought it was something I said. She thought it was something she said. Hey, Patrick, thank you so much for what you do, not only in this community, but other communities. And when it comes to high school athletics, man, you love this stuff. I do. I enjoy being here. What a night. Um, I, I just feel I, I'm blessed to be here. I, I feel really good. You know, um, I want to thank a lot of people, you know, um, Jim Fruji for Morningstar. Um, um, uh, you know, yeah, uh, Patrick, I got before you uh, before you do that, I got to ask. Why you do stuff like this and, and be so so supportive and Landmark is so proud to be able to give you um, $500 to the Booster Club and give you this beautiful chair. And we just say thank you for everything you do for the athletics here in this community and others. Well, yes, I, you know, I played high school football and there's nothing better. We get a night like tonight, you know, playing this sport, playing all these sports. Um, you learn a lot. You gain friendships, relationships. Amen. You never forget them. Um, it's just exciting to be back here. Um, I, I saw a friend uh, that I, from high school I haven't seen in 30 years tonight. And uh, um, I'm just glad to support it. You know, this community, the kids, they're our future. And uh, um, we need them. Hey, do you know, ever any time you hear about Lynch McGuanago, you hear about things they do in, in the community. And I just say thank you. And Landmark Credit Union says thank you, Matt. It's good to meet you. Yes, thank you. You bet. Thanks back. For me. You bet. Thanks back to, to you, boys. Thanks to Landmark. Army National Guard halftime report will continue following these messages. You're watching Friday Night Rivals on My24.
It's the Wisconsin National Guard Halftime Report here on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. McGuanago on top of Muskego 10 to 6. We head back downstairs. Mike McGivern with our United States Marine Corps interview. Guys, I always feel better about our country when I get done talking to Marines. Uh, Jordan Olson, he is from Oshkosh, by the way. Uh, thank you so much for your service, young man. Hey, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it, and thank you so much for having me here. Yeah, so when you get a chance to talk to kids at this age, and you're not that far removed, um, what do you tell them the reason would be for them to at least look at becoming a Marine? The number one thing I tell all of them is I just want to give them the opportunity to find something to be successful. And the Marine Corps has so many opportunities that we can give them to find a career and develop themselves as not only a human being, but as a young man or woman and find success in their future. Not bad for a boy from Oshkosh. Hey, you know what? I, I think I did all right. I, you know, I went to Madison and ended up okay. So He did really good, boys. Back to you. Mike, thank you. The National Guard Halftime Report continues right after this on my 24 <laughs> that way it'll be fun TV. <laughs> Let's head back to Mike McGivern, our Carthage College interview. Hey, guys, I love talking to Ben Gores. He's the director of uh, financial aid at Carthage. Hey, when people come for a visit, how cool is it if they'd come on a Saturday and watch this football team play? Yeah, coming to Carthage and visiting on a weekend is always a great time. Um, this weekend, uh, tomorrow, our football team does play the number one team in the country, North Central, which is uh, would be a good good time to come and visit, but also the following week is our homecoming. Uh, great, a lot of events going on that week as well. Um, but all of our sporting events are very fun to watch throughout the throughout the, the course of the school year. We have uh, very competitive teams, men's and women's basketball. Our men's volleyball team is two-time defending national champs that will be uh, taking the court this spring. So uh, all season, all year long, if you are interested in being a, being an athlete in college, Carthage, we have outstanding facilities. But we would also love to to uh, see if you can uh, compare yourself to those athletes at the at the college level as well. Hey Ben, thank you so much. When you go, you know what? Bring the family and, and, and stand and, and sit and talk to Ben about financial aid. He'll help you out. I'll tell you that. It's good to see you. Good seeing you too. All right, thanks, brother. Back to you, boys. Mike and Ben, thank you very much. Highlights from our first half tonight. So we get a look at how we ended up 10-6 through one half of play after the McGuanigal got the 21-yard field goal. Muskego's first possession. You see Stoiber bounce to the outside. You know, these running backs are 
earning their keep tonight because they're getting hit hard and often. It's been a steady dose of Stoiber running the football tonight for Muskego, primarily between the tackles. That set up the game-tying field goal. Meanwhile, McGuanigo, they've had a variety of ways to get downfield tonight. Herbig connecting here. Got a nice uh, run fake off that. A little waggle action by the quarterback. Throws it downfield. And Win Stang with a couple of nice runs on that touchdown drive. He went in from four yards out. Our only Planet Fitness touchdown of the night. That's how we arrived at our 10-6 score here at the half with McGuanago on top. We'll take another break. Back with more of our Wisconsin Army National Guard halftime report on our Friday Night Rivals on My24. We, we continue with our Wisconsin Army National Guard halftime report. Once again, down to the sideline we go, Mike McGivern. Hey, guys, uh, Bruce Janzik, best electric. Hey, so you've been an electrician a long time. What I didn't know is not only that, but you're a teacher. When, when uh, young people want to become an electrician, what do you tell them? It's a great profession. It's no college debt. It's a good living. Uh, it just, it's wonderful. You'll do something different every day. Hey, when you get a chance to teach kids and, and, and then get them on their way when it comes to this, not only do, do you want and you're looking to hire uh, young guys right now and gals, but you'll teach them. What a big advantage for you at Best Electric. Yeah, I'm, I'm uh, involved in a program. I just helped uh, a maintenance person get an apprenticeship. It, 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 that's why, one of the reasons why I teach, because I want to give back to the industry. Bruce Jensen, we always talk about it, giving back to the community. You know, he continues to do it not only in this kind of stuff in sports, but certainly in, in uh, what he does for a living as an electrician. Matt, it's good to see you. Thanks. Thank you. This is awesome. You guys do a great job. Thank you. Thanks, Bruce. Back to you, boys. Bruce, thank you so much for picking up the sponsorship this year. We're glad to have you aboard our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. We are set for the second half. The Warriors will get the football to begin this second half. Coach, some adjustments at halftime here. What do you what do you th expect to see? Uh, you know, they've kept things pretty close to the vest. There's not been nothing here too extravagant. I've seen a little bit of passing. So you wonder what kind of uh, special plays that they put in. Uh, both teams like to run. Do they have a halfback pass? That becomes, a, you know, 
because they've both been trying to get out wide at times. And then defensively, what are they going to do to try to stymie the opposition? Ryan McCormick made field goal in the first quarter. Got things started tonight. Our kickoff's brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. McCormick 6-for-6 six six now in the field goal department this season. He will boot this one. Trying to get to the corner, and it gets into the end zone just inside the pylon for the touchback. Muskego will take it first and 10 at the 20-yard line. Stoiber over 100 yards rushing tonight. Eight carries, 105 yards tonight. We'll see what kind of adjustments they've made in their blocking schemes, Muskego. You know, they've seen the reactions by McGuanago now. Can you play off those, do something a little bit differently, maybe a series of down blocks and then kicking out on the up far outside? From their own 20. Double wing with the tight end lined up on the far side. Stoiber will get the call. Left side breaking tackles across the 25. Fights his way forward to the 28-yard line for a pickup of eight. Gage Tower, the junior linebacker, there to make the stop for McWanago. Good second effort. Stoiber, yards after contact. That's been his M.O. the last couple years. He does not go down. He fights for every yard he gains. Second and a deuce for... Muskego from their own 28. Stoiber again picking the right, left side across the 30 to the 32. Pick up a four and a best electric supply first down. Best electric service. Best electric service connect with the best. Well, they go to that left side. They've got Dom Schneer over there, a junior, 6'1, 215. Gabe Enerson, 5'10, 210. We've got the center. Now, they're not the world's biggest people, but they move very well. Lots of poles, lots of folding. Braden Horn in under center on first down. Trying to go up the middle. Indian defense there. Stoiber stopped for no gain. Jackson Link, the nose tackle, clogging things up that time for the Indian defense. Got defeated the block by the center, Alex Wazinski. Stood him up, and then linebackers came and plugged those holes. Second down and 10. Ball at their own 33-yard line. Opening drive of our second half. Coming around. The wing from the near far side out to the 40-yard line. Max Schneider on the carry. Off his left wing position that time. Tower brought him down once again. Schneider, good, good speed. Part of the, some track relay teams here at Muskego that have made it to the state track meet. Did a good job of tucking that one away on the exchange that time between he and Braden Horn. Third and four from their 39. Stoiber met in the backfield and dropped for a loss back at the 36-yard line. When you do the replay on this one, you're going to see the two guards run into each other. That allowed Walker Powers to make the tackle. Here's the look. Both guards pull, both guards run into each other. A little confusion on that play. Fourth and six. Nolan Tomczyk in there to punt. Twin safeties back on the return. McCormick, or excuse me, Stang and Kilton off the side of his foot. He's going to make it to midfield. And will roll dead shy of the 45-yard line. 18-yard punt, no return. 
So McWanago, good field position. Our closed captioning tonight is brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock Identity Theft Protection starts here. So the Indians will start their first drive of the second half on their own 46-yard line. Win Stang, 94 yards running the football on 18 carries tonight. They'll get the call here. On the end around. Owen Kilton. Jet sweep. 35 yard line. 19 yard pickup and a first down. Wintheiser there to make the stop. There's one of those adjustments we talked about at halftime. How do you go out of your regular sets, put a little wrinkle so they did the jet sweep. Now what you want to watch is see if they fake the jet sweep. Give it to staying up the middle. Great steal block on the edge there by Emmett Dodds, the yeah. fullback. He did a nice job there, allowing Kilton to take that inside angle on the far hash mark. From the 34, first and 10. Staying, galloping across the 30, down to the 28-yard line. Over 100 yards now on the night for Win Stang. Logan Lawan there to make the stop. You could see the right side of the McGuanago defense offense, excuse me, pull and help lead through that hole. Gain of six on the play, sets up a second. We'll call it a long three, three and a half. Evan Herbig working from the pistol, has two receivers here to the near side, staying the single back. Fake to Stang. Herbig hit as he's thrown. Oh, back over the middle, incomplete. Dangerous pass there. Anytime you're rolling right and throw back toward the middle of the field. INT written on the football. It's one of those, you say to yourself, okay, we, we didn't give that ball up that time. It could have been. Good pressure once again. Off the edge that time. Yeah, that outside linebacker stayed at home, did not try to follow the play away from him. Sets up third and four. Stack receivers to the right side. Toss to Stang. Tries to get the edge. He went down. I think he's going to be short of the first down. Tried to work that edge as far as he could. Ran out of real estate. Mason Prudlow there defensively, the senior corner on that side. Now a decision for Coach Ganevic. Well, coach Ganevic, you know, not only is the head coach, he's the offensive coordinator, he's also the special teams coach. So he's put that into his computer and said, okay, here's what we're going to give it as a try here. They're going to go for it on fourth and two at the Muskego 26. Staying the single back. Rybolt in the slot near side. Staying the first down and more. Pounds his way to the 21-yard line. Five-yard pickup, first down, McWanago. Mitchell Selhausen having a, quite a game. That's his ninth tackle tonight already. So Armando Brazzani, the yeah. backside tackle, helped lead through the hole. Both these teams are, are pulling with their offensive linemen, trying to get po- people at the point of attack. Best electric service first down at the 22-yard line. Midway through this third quarter, first possession here for McWanago in this second half. Set up by the short punt. Stang picks his way around the left side, gets the edge, lowers his shoulder inside the 15, down to the 12-yard line. That is how you finish a run. 6'1", 195 pounds, runs hard. Doesn't stop at first contact. He's got the point of that ball covered, lowers the shoulder. Will Wensick absorbing the blow. And we're inside the Salvation Army red zone. Again, this season when a team gets inside their opponent's 20, they enter the Salvation Army red zone. Salvation Army doing the most good. Visit them online at samilwaukee.org. Herbig rolling. Goes back over the middle. It is nearly picked off, was it? No, they rule it incomplete. That was Very close to another 
interception that time. Case of trying to Ooh. force that ball in. Yeah, that was not there. Herbig got away with two here on this drive. Trying to do his Patrick Mahomes imitation and that noti- was... noticing, by the way, Nathan Roy, number 77, walking a little stiff legged out there as he heads back to the huddle. That was Logan Lawan in there, breaking that up with the near interception. Stang trying to go up the middle. A hard two that time to about the 10. Zach Landis now in at nose tackle, able to make the stop along with Blair. I'll see if this time if Herbick fakes it to Stang, keeps it himself, and tries to get to the outside. He'll bring Dodds back in at fullback. Take out the receiver. Yeah, Dodds is really like an extra guard in there. Offset eye here, working out of the pistol is Herbig. Stang the single back. They'll toss it to Stang. Cuts back inside. Inside the five, first and goal, McQuanago. One more look. He's short of the first down. Awfully close. About a yard and a half short. So this sets up fourth down. Fourth and two. Ball at the four yard line. Once again, they will go for it. Staying to the goal line. No signal. Did not get in, but will get enough for the first down. Wynn staying inside the one yard line. Converts on two fourth downs on this drive. When Mr. Stang comes to uh, morning practice tomorrow, he's going to be a very sore young man. Stang, touchdown, McWanago. Muskego tried blitzing the linebacker, but Stang got one step outside. Second touchdown of the night for Wynn Stang. And McWanago by 10, another look. Walks it in. Nathan Roy, Ryan Mazur, Grant Stromberg, Will Schnabel, Armando Brazzani, that offensive line. Extra point by McCormick is up, a line drive, and it's good. We will break, 351 remaining here in this third quarter, and it's McWanago up 17-6 on Muskego, our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals, presented by Landmark Credit Union. There's a new show coming to My24 that will have you talking. Caramo Brown he gives insightful advice to his guests while exploring a variety of subjects. Watch Caramo weekdays at 10 starting Monday right here on My24. 
54-yard drive by McGuanagall. The two-yard touchdown run, the second of the night for Win Stang. 17-6, our Menards kickoff brought to you by Menards. Save big money at Menards. Returnable. Stoiber, or check that Lawan. Finding some room, Logan Lawan. Short of the 30-yard line. 27-yard return by Lawan. Riley Wernis there to make the stop. A couple of good returns for Lawan tonight. Yes. Well, let's see if they, they take Braden Horn and take a little page out of the McGuanago playbook, do a little bit of waggle pass, a little bootleg pass, try to free up that tight end, Aiden Krause. They also have the other tight end, Louis Schwabe, honorable mention all-conference performer a year ago, who's 6'5", 200, so a nice target. You see Aiden Krause splitting out here to the right. Horn under center, first and 10 from the 29. Wants to pass, comes back. Nice catch by Aiden Krause. You called and coach out to the 43-yard line, gain of 14. Gage Tower there to make the play. Yeah, Aiden and his brother Ashton, the running back, both over six feet, both were starters in the basketball team last year. Coach Krause laughingly said they got that from his wife. <laughs> got past Braden Pampu that time. From their own 42, first and 10, Muskego. Wing coming around, not going to get much. Good recovery that time by the Indian defense. Schneider. Brought down short of the line to gain. Gage Tower and Colin Biola both there. Number 90, Walker Powers, the defensive end, got into the backfield, disrupted the flow a little bit. Coach Dave Adams says, you know, Powers having a very good year so far. Loss of one, second and 11 from the 41. Pump fake, trying to go back left side to Schwabe. It's incomplete. Riley Wernis was right there defensively on Schwabe. In our first visit of the second half, here's Mike McGivern. So, guys, you see number 77 from Guanago playing defensive tackle. Hasn't played defense all year. I was talking to a family member of his today and said, any surprises for tonight? This person said, watch out, he might play a little defense tonight. And there you go. He's an awfully good football player. Good pick up, Mike. He's out there now. Right tackle, right defensive tackle. Once again, Ashton Krause trying to get the edge. Nowhere to go. Great job by the McGuanago defense. And on cue, it was Nathan Roy out there that blew that play up. Gavin Adams was there to clean up. Not mistaken, Nathan Roy actually made honorable mention all-conference last year as a defensive player as a sophomore. Yes. They, that one. Coach Ganevok said, well, we'd like to not play him both ways on Friday. Apparently he's reconsidered that option. <laughs> New returner there, that's Jack Sevasta out there now for McGuanago. Tom Chick, nice kick. Fair catch signaled for at the 21-yard line and made by Owen Kilton. So we'll start this drive from their 21, 152 to go here in the third. Get a good look at Evan Herbig getting back in there. Yeah, Herbig coming into the game was 11 for 12 on the year, 139 yards, two touchdowns. Rybolt and Kilton here to the near side, staying in the backfield, staying up the middle. We'll get a couple short of the 25-yard line, gain of about three. Officially a gain of four. Gutierrez and Blair both there for Muskego. No market at the 25-yard line. Second and six 
Reibolt to the near side. Kilton split out to the right side, staying in the backfield along with the fullback Dodds. This is Kelton in motion. Stang will get the call. 21 out to the 29, short of the 30. Gain of about four. It'll set up third and short. Nick McCullough there to make the stop for Muskego. Time Muskego brought a linebacker up, put him on the end of the line to get a four-man front, trying to get a little different look for the McGuanico offense to adjust to. Third and two from their own 29. Toss to Stang. Stepped out of one tackle but tripped up shy of the first down. Maybe lost half yard or a yard there. We'll bring up fourth and three. We'll see if Coach Ganevac will wind this clock down. There you see just that shoestring tackle that time bring it, brought him down. So that will end our third quarter here in McWanago. A classic eight matchup between two unbeaten teams, and it's McWanago homestanding here tonight, leading Muskego 17-6. It's our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. With Terry Kelly and Mike McGivern, John Weiser with you. Fourth quarter action from Hensler Field in McWanago. 17-6. McWanago on top of Muskego. Fourth and three from the 28. Ryan McCormick in to punt. And we'll take a McWanago bounce and roll inside the 30. Inside the 25 and dead at the 22-yard line. 50 yards with the roll that time on the punt. And that's what you wanted there. Flip the field here. Let Muskego go the length of the field. Up with your team up by 11 here. Early in the fourth. Are we in a, a, a position now, Coach, where throwing the football becomes more of an option here for Muskego, or are they going to still not, try and pound it on the ground here? Not always. They, they, you know, over the years, they've broken many long runs. We're talking 60, 70-yard runs. So they're not going to abandon that quite yet. But they are a little bit more prone to pass this year. Stoiber battles his way across the 25 to the 26-yard line, gain of about five on the play. 13 carries now for Stoiber tonight. Gerard and Fisher making the stop. 13 carries, 121 yards for Stoiber tonight. Six, 
from the 27. Wing in motion. Again, Stoiber gets the call. Out across the 30, should have enough for a best electric service first down. To the sideline, once again, Mike, what do you got? Hey, guys, your timing was perfect. Uh, with that question to Terry Kelly, I think I start throwing it. They talked on the sideline here. Look, we're wearing them down. Exactly what we talked about. We're going to own the fourth quarter. Let's stay on track and do what we do. We'll see if it works, boys. So far, so good. Moving the sticks here. First and 10 from their own 30. Check that third and one. Just shy of the first down. They'll get it here. Stoiber breaks it open. Stoiber across midfield. Brought down from behind. That'll be a horse collar tackle. Add 15 more to the end of the run. There's your big play burst by Sam Stoiber. It was Gavin Adams who caught up to him. Grabbed him by the back of the collar. He'll be flagged for that. Should move the football near the 10-yard line. Well, Coach Krause has a tremendous amount of confidence in his wing T offense. Hold on, hold on. Horse collar tackle. On the defense. Half the distance to the goal. First down. You watch it here. Got him right from behind. Yep. You can see yep. how it can put the knee yes. at risk, and that's why they've got that rule in. Just outside the 10-yard line, first and 10, Muskego. Stoiber picks his way over the left side, moving the pile inside the 5-yard line. Riley Wernis and Cole Gerard both there inside the Salvation Army red zone. Muskego, five yards in a cloud of dust here on this drive. Horn under center, Stoiber the single back. Stoiber inside the five, down to the three. Colin Viola, linebacker there to make the stop. Yeah, one, Third of the thing, and two. one of the things McGuanago has done here is they brought in Wolf Schnabel, another one of their offensive linemen, to spell Nathan Roy, defensive line. Third and three. Movement up front. Schneer, Dom Schneer, the left tackle, popped out of his stance. False start. Offense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat, third down. When you think about it, how few penalties right. there have been this evening, you know, that's a testimony to both teams and their coaching staffs. Sets up a third and eight following the five-yard false start. Schneider in motion. Stoiber down to about the fourth. Schneider on the end of round, excuse me. Riley Fisher, first, all, first team All-State there to make the tackle. His fifth tonight. Well, you ask Coach Ken Krause what's his favorite play. He always says the belly series. So that's the bread and butter of this offense. Down 11, fourth and three from the four. They'll roll Horn. Horn going to throw. It is incomplete, broken up. Looked like he was coming back inside looking for Schwabi. I don't know. Didn't quite get the number of the defender who got in there. Got a hand, I, yeah. you know, I think, deflected it at the last second. Here we go. 
So they roll Horn on fourth down. Pass was thrown a little bit behind. It was Gerard, the defender. So McGuanago will take over on downs at their own four-yard line. 7.45 to play, leading by 11. Critical series here. Can McGuanago keep the ball moving upfield, and can Muskego put the stops? Stang breaks it. Out across the 30 to the 40-yard line. 36-yard run for a win, Stang. Will Wenzik brought him down. 171 yards and two touchdowns tonight for Stang. Look at the shifting and weaving and... Well, lacrosse is an excellent, you know, corresponding sport with football. Out east, you know, many, many teams. Famous Jim Brown was an unbelievable lacrosse player besides being one of the great backs. Rybolt in the slot next to Kilton here on the near side. They go back to Stang up the middle. About the 44-yard line, gain of about four. Nick McCullough there on the stop, but this keeps the clock moving as we approach seven minutes to play. Win Stang, the state's leading rusher, knocking on the door of 200 here tonight. Once again, you see him split two men wide. That's to pull some of those outside backers up, create some more open space if they can. Stang nearly broke another one shy of midfield. Maybe short of the first down. Bring up third and two. Jack LaRose was there making the tackle. Excellent, excellent tackle that time in the open field. Third and one for McWanago at their own 49. Again, it'll be Reibolt and Kilton here to the near side. Stang, first down, lost his helmet again. He'll get the first down, but he's going to have to leave for one play. Probably checking to see if his head's still inside that helmet. Oh, my goodness. He was going down, and he got drilled. Logan Lawan. Mr. Lawan's been a real force in that uh, defensive backfield for turning kicks. Conference champ in the Classic 8 in the long jump. Another one of those multi-sport athletes that are so prevalent in both these teams. From the Muskego 47. Jackson Miller. That's his second carry tonight. Another helmet comes off. Xavier Gutierrez losing the lid. He'll have to come out for a play. Yeah, Zach Landis was also in the defensive line, a 5'9", 250-pound senior. That'll split the receivers to either side. They'll bring the fullback Dodds back in here. He'll line up as a wing to the right side. Second and 10 from the 47. Stang back in there as the single back. Evan Herbig. Jet toss. Reibolt did not get the edge. Good play here on the near side. Well read. Logan Lawan, fifth tackle tonight for Lawan. He'll give him one. Third and nine for McWanago. Four and a half minutes to go. If anything, this is at least milk some time off the clock for McWanago here. Mitchell Schellhausen did a nice job of forcing that play to keep going wide. We've mentioned his name quite a bit this evening. Coach Ganevic going to take this all the way down here and take a timeout. 
Yep, he will take the timeout. We will take a break as well. Exactly four minutes left here in McGuanago. The Indians facing a critical third down, leading by 11. Our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals, presented by Landmark Credit Union. I'm out. Between justice and revenge lies a town full of colorful characters with their own agendas. You can venture into the Old West with new rules. Settle up for the new series Walker Independence. That's Thursday, October 6th on CW18. Looking forward to that. Third and nine following the McWanago timeout. Indians have it at the Muskego 46-yard line. Two receivers near side, Reibolt along with Kilton. Stang, breaking tackles inside the 40. He'll get the first down. Wow, third effort by Wynn Stang. If you want to use the word determination, yes. that would probably be apropos at this point. One. Two, three, four, five, six, before he's finally brought down. They call it yaks, yard after contact. Best electric service, first down. Now Muskego will need to think about taking some timeouts here defensively. 3.25 to go. Hilton. On the jet sweep, toss. Well read by the Muskego defense. Good job stringing it out. Mitchell Selhausen. What a night he's had. Ten tackles tonight for Selhausen. And that's a case where the running back should have turned it upfield. The, the, the flow was going. And, you know, credit Muskego. They're, they're so well trained. They're going to string the play out. But sometimes there's a seam. And, you know, on that particular play, Jackson Miller just didn't quite see the opening. Timeout Muskego. Their first. Well, we've talked about Win Stang tonight. Would you believe it or not? The hit of the game going to an offensive player tonight. Let's take a look. This is back in the first half. Our Milwaukee Admirals hit of the game tonight. This is how you finish it off. Boom. Lower that shoulder. Another look. Our hit of the game going to Win Stang tonight. Brought to you by the Milwaukee Admirals. Both he and his counterpart, Sam Stoiber, both hard running yeah. backs. Uh, you know, these two teams are going to face each other again, uh, unless the WIA has some very weird situation for how they look at the southeastern part of the state. As you mentioned earlier tonight, could be four times within a calendar year yeah. they've faced each other. Is that unreal or what? That's, you know... Two by two, they break it off. Again, they go with the jet sweep reverse. Reibolt back to Kilton around the far side. Kilton out of bounds. Inside the 20-yard line, Matt Blair ran him down. Coach Kanavik digging deep into the playbook. Now there's that little, you know, part of the brain of a head coach, offensive coordinator saying, when's the right time for this? And you can see 91 try to close it down. 
Tristan Mick, he wanted to <laughs> take that away. You become a creature of habit sometimes when you're playing good defense, and coaches can figure out how to take advantage of that. Two very fine teams here. This, you know, this is old-time yeah. football. This is high school football at its best. Yeah. I, I love this. From the 19, inside the Salvation Army red zone. First and 10, McWanago. Stang around the left side inside the 15-yard line. Looked like Logan Lawan, he's had a fine game tonight. Near interception, seven tackles tonight. You know, not numbers can be sometimes sure. lost on people, but here's a set of numbers for Wolf Schnabel, yeah. right guard who just pulled. He benches 400 pounds, he squats 600 pounds, he deadlifts 600 pounds, and he does clean and jerk with 385. 6'2", 265. <laughs> Oh, well, coming up following the game tonight, stay tuned for our U.S. Marine Player of the Game presentation. That's brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. I think we kind of know where that's going, but we'll let you at home kind of play along, see if your guess is as good as ours. See what the odds are in Vegas on this, <laughs> right? Did you see his ears perked up when you said Vegas. Right, right. He'll be there in a few That's weeks. Right. In a few weeks, I'll have to send a message to the <laughs> Las Vegas authorities. <laughs> Two fifty-three remaining. Muskego has one timeout remaining. McWanago has the football at the Muskego fourteen-yard line, facing a second and five. Stang the single back. Kilton and Reibolt, the split ends to the left. Stang stays to the 10. Tizer there to make the stop along with Lawan and Muskego forced to take their final timeout here on defense. Coach Lucchese went out to do that. Uh, you know, Coach Krause mm. says his staff is just unbelievable, and he really keeps a lot of praise on Ryan Lucchese, the defensive coordinator, and the excellent job he's done the past five, six years. Our closed captioning tonight has been brought to you by LifeLock. LifeLock Identity Theft Protection starts here. It's been a good one tonight. As we said, a hard-fought classic high school football game yeah that, that little short punt that did a mm, you know that kind of changed things didn't it gave mcguanago a chance to drive down get the it's touchdown fun, it's funny coach we talked about offense and defense but it really was that special teams play there that kind of tilted it into mcguanago's favor and these two teams will study this film oh yeah and they'll learn from it it'll be a teaching tape third and one from the eleven. Stang gets the first down inside the 10 down to the six yard line. That is your ball game. And there was that play we talked about the jet sweep look and now give it to Stang going straight ahead. Two bills for Stang tonight. I don't know if Mr. Stang is going to buy that offensive line some pizza or something, but <laughs> I sure would find a way to treat those boys. Yes, sir. Herbig will wait for the back judge to count it down. Stang fights his way to the two. Xavier Gutierrez brought him down. Just inside the three-yard line. Second and goal from the three. Again, Muskego out of timeouts. Cannot stop the clock. McWanago taking their time. 
second and goal just inside the three. Stang. Touchdown, McWanago. Third Planet Fitness touchdown tonight by Wynn Stang. He is who we thought he was tonight. Well, some people, if they look at this score, I think they're going to get the wrong impression about what happened tonight. You, you certainly did see McWanago do many, many things well. But Muskego was right in there going through the game. And, uh, I'm sure they'll be looking forward for a chance for redemption. McCormick tacks on the extra point. 24-6. McWanago. One more look at the third touchdown run tonight by Wynn Stang. I'm sure the Muskego uh, coaching staff will talk about what they saw as a big hold. Mm. They're creating a big seam. But uh, that young man deserves a seat. Yeah. He has worked his tail off tonight. Wynn Stang coming in, the leading rusher in the state. At over 1,200 yards rushing coming in. 200 yards tonight and three touchdowns. I want to get into a cool tub and take out a little bit of that soreness. Again, the drive starting at the four yard line. Shutting down Muskego on fourth down. 96-yard drive capped off by the wind staying. Touchdown run, his third of the game. Round ball by McCormick. It'll stay inbounds. There to pick it up. Matrinsky. Hayden Chitwood coming down. On the kickoff coverage unit for McWanago making the tackle. Well, Muskego will be at Waukesha South next week before they face Arrowhead at home. Meanwhile, for McWanago, they're at Arrowhead next week. That'll be an interesting game. Mm, that battle. will be a curious game, too, will it not? From the 22, we will hand it off. Alex Smook on the carry for Muskego. Brought down in the play by Hunter Osowski. To the line of scrimmage to the 26 yard line, maybe a couple. That might be the final play of the night here tonight. For the second consecutive time here in Mukwanago, the Indians hold serve against Muskego. Winning a playoff matchup here last November, and they pick up the win here tonight in late September. 24 6, your final tonight, Coach Ganevak. Getting the win, moves his team to 5-0 and on the season. Muskego, their first loss of the year, falling to 4-1. and Coming up, it'll be the United States Marine Corps Player of the Game presentation, our championship trophy presentation, all that coming up in the postgame with Mike McGivern. Our final tonight, McWanago 24, Muskego 6. The Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union.
Yeah. Yep. You betcha. Yo, that was the uh, rush two old timers. That was a no-brainer. Easiest decision yes. in the history of decisions, <laughs> as the one commercial says. Nick Lane, or right you, up the freeway. You've been thrown out of that Glendale, I think. <laughs> you've been thrown out of Glendale before. <laughs> What's he come up with this? Sean, we'll see you next week. You'll come in. Classic eight matchup tonight between two unbeatens goes to Mukwanago here at Hensler Field. The Indians 24-6 victory over Muskego. We're just about set to present our United States Marine Player of the Game Award. So, Getting everybody set. We'll send it down to Mike. Mike, it's yours. Hey, boys, uh, he said he's a little tired, but <laughs> I'll tell you what, that was a heck of a performance. Uh, over 200 yards and three touchdowns. And he's got a date for homecoming. That's not bad. Hey, congratulations, U.S. Marine player of the game. Well done. That's a good game for you boys. Yeah, definitely. I love this team. We're just coming out here, putting our hearts into the game. It's a fun time. Hey, this offensive line, man, they're tough. They are very tough. They're the only reason I have all these accolades going on this season. They're just the reason I'm succeeding so hard. Yeah, I'll tell you what. They uh, they think the world of you. And all they got to do is get a crease and you get it going for sure. U.S. Marine player of the game. You love a guy like this. One of the first things he said to me was, am I going to have time to thank my offensive line? I go, yeah, no doubt. He is uh, the kind of guy that Marines would love to talk to. Yeah, absolutely. Got to respect that, right? I think this young man probably uh, owes his O-line dinner sometime. What do you guys think? Yeah. yeah. Man, I don't know how much money the boy has. All right. I mean, hey, that's what you got to do. Those guys got you this ball and player of the game you owe them. You're responsible for all, everyone on this team in this win, so congratulations, gentlemen. Really proud of all of you. Yeah, hey, congratulations, U.S. Marine player of the game. Give him the ball. We're good. Hey, boys, back up to you. Mike, thank you. Win Stang, our United States Marine Corps player of the game. 39 carries, 209 yards, and three touchdowns. This is the first of those three trips to the house tonight for Mr. Stang. You can see that blocking he's had. It just yeah, kind of wiped away the front. Very shifty, very shifty as he runs. And this, the final touchdown late here in the fourth. Win Stang, 209 yards, now over 1,400 yards this season rushing. Our player of the game brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. Championship trophy time. Mike, take it away. Yep. Coach Kanevak, you know, we, we had talked before the game a little bit, and he said, look, I, I, man, I have a ton of respect for, for this, uh, this program, Muskego, but I like our team. I like them a lot. Coach, he kind of wore them, wore them down a little bit, and I thought took over in the fourth quarter. Got to feel really good about this win. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't like them a lot. I love them. Yeah, uh, We tell them that all the time. Um, I'm just proud of, uh, that we get to come back and do it again on Sunday, uh, and we just keep to getting to grow together as a team, keep working, and, uh, yeah, I couldn't be prouder of their performance tonight.
You know, Mike, sometimes you, you think in, a, in an atmosphere like this, and one of the best atmospheres I think we've been in in a long time doing these, these games on my 24. I mean, both student sections going at it in a really good way, in a, in a spirited way, and not too big. The, the lights were not too bright for this quarterback, this offensive line, this defense. Got to give a ton of credit to this defense. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, our game plan was, was solid. Uh, kids executed their assignments because with that wing T offense, if you, if you have one mishap, uh, it's it's good for six. So uh, super proud of it. It was just an ultimate team performance tonight. Hey, I'm on the sidelines, on the Muskego sideline. I can tell you, Coach, a ton of respect for you, these players, and, and your staff. Um, when I hear the coaches and the players over here, a ton of respect for you guys. And uh, I'll tell you what, you, I know that it's very competitive, but the things that I hear over here on this sideline was like, man, this is a really good football team. And so i got to give them a lot of respect. Absolutely. Uh, we have respect for them. We have respect for, you know, everybody in our league. We believe we play in the best league in the state of Wisconsin. And, and, you know, we're just going to – we got another battle next week. We'll get on to yeah. them on Sunday. Yeah, I want, you to, I want you to celebrate this one and enjoy it. But I know you, you're thinking Arrowhead by the time you get to the – Butt dance party first in the yeah. locker room. Here you go. There it is. Bang. Dance party, you better show up, right? That's a celebration. McQuanago, the winner tonight, 24 6. We will step out, take a final break, and then a final word from Hensler Field right after this. old-fashioned old-school football tonight strap it on buckle up 24-6 your final tonight McGuanago takes this victory but they've got Arrowhead next week at Arrowhead yeah you you know you can celebrate this evening and then got to shift your attention Muskego heads to Waukesha South next week well we want to thank all of the fine sponsors who bring you Friday Night Rivals to you each and every week of course our title sponsors Heiser Automotive Group and Landmark Credit Union, along with the Army National Guard, Best Electric Service, Carthage College, Salvation Army, United States Marine Corps, LifeLock, Planet Fitness, the Milwaukee Admirals, GlaxoSmithKline, Menards, and Community Advocates. Tonight's game is going to repeat tomorrow at a special time. That'll be at 8 o'clock tomorrow evening, so make sure you check that out. Then join us again next Friday at 7 for our North Shore Conference Showdown. 
West Bend West and Nicolet. That should be an interesting matchup. Interesting. Nicolet had a nice rebound year last year. West Bend West has grabbed a couple victories this year, so two two teams trying to keep going on that march to get to the playoffs. Our first visit to Nicolet next Friday night. West Bend West, Nicolet, right here on My24 at 7 o'clock. Big thank you to our My24 sports crew here tonight, bringing you all the action from McGuanago. Mike McGivern down on the field, Terry Kelly. We had uh, Sean Raffaelli, our spotter. Andy, our stat guy, he has been a whiz here tonight. We love Andy up here. I'm John Weiser, wishing you all a very pleasant good evening from Hensler Field, where tonight McWanago remains undefeated, knocking off the previously undefeated Muskego Warriors 24-6. Until next Friday, we'll see you again here on the Heiser Automotive Group, Friday Night Rivals, presented by Landmark Credit Union. Good night, everyone.